Hi folks, Josh Wolf with Wolf Vintage Watches here. Welcome to my shop. In this video, we're going to take a look at a 1940 Hamilton Ross in rose gold. Let's get into it. Before we get into the details, here are some of the basic specs. The watch is 24 millimeters wide, excluding the crown. It has a length of 29 millimeters and it's a little more than 9 millimeters thick to the top of the mineral glass crystal. Lug to lug is 37 millimeters. The lug width is 16 millimeters. The case back is snap-on and the movement is an American-made Hamilton manual wind caliber 982 with small seconds at the 6 o'clock. Hamilton made the Ross from 1939 through 1946 with an interruption in production for four years from 1942 to 1945 as they shifted manufacturing to support the war effort. Beginning in 1940, the Ross was offered with a choice of different dials and case materials. One of the case options was this 14 karat rose gold case, referred to as coral in the catalogs, that came with the 19 jewel 982 movement. There were two dial variations offered for this case, and this particular watch has the 18 karat applied gold numeral dial. The snap-on case back of this watch is engraved with R. McD. Who knows? This could very well have been Ronald McDonald's watch. The unsigned crown is also in rose gold and is likely original to the watch. It can sometimes be hit or miss with getting original crowns for these watches as they've often been serviced over the years and the crowns are replaced. Like many men's watches of this era, the Ross is a tank style watch. While a relatively simple watch, the beauty of the watch is in the details. There is a small step along the top of the bezel that gives a subtle shadow line around the entire watch. And of course the design and the way the lugs are attached to the case add to the angular appearance of the watch when you look at it straight on. Turning the watch sideways though, you can see how the case and crystal have a gentle curve that continue all the way through the drilled lugs. The sides of the case back are contoured, lifting the watch slightly off the wrist making room for the crown while still maintaining the appearance of a very thin profile. As mentioned earlier, the Ross has an applied gold numeral dial with coral finish. The numerals are solid 18 karat gold and are rhodium plated to give that high polished white gold appearance. The handset is also rhodium plated to match the numerals. The other dial option for the rose gold case offered by Hamilton was a polished numeral dial. I have an example of the polished numeral dial here although it's in a white gold filled case. There are a few blemishes here and there on this dial, but certainly not terrible and better than a lot of 80 plus year old dials I've come across. The minute and sub seconds tracks are painted, as is the Hamilton logo at the 12 o'clock. Another detail that adds to the overall look and feel of this watch is that sub second style. It's sunken into the dial, which not only allows for clearance between the second and hour hands, but along with the applied numerals, it gives this thin watch added depth. The dial is protected by a mineral glass crystal. This is a new old stock crystal that I installed when I serviced and restored the watch. I have this Ross on a brand new black genuine leather two-piece strap with a rose gold buckle. Now let's take a closer look at the movement. The 982 is a rectangular shaped movement that was used primarily in the tank style Hamilton models. The movement was first introduced in 1935 and was made all the way through 1951. Being more premium than the 17 jeweled caliber 980 that was used in many 10 karat gold filled models at the time, the 19 jewel 982 was typically found in Hamilton's 14 karat gold filled models. The 982 is an American made movement that was manufactured by Hamilton in their Lancaster, Pennsylvania factory. The serial number on this particular movement dates from 1939. I've serviced and restored hundreds of 982s over the years and it's one of my favorite vintage movements to work on. It can be a bit tricky to get three pivot holes to line up when reassembling such a small caliber, but the fact that such an old movement typically only needs a good cleaning and lubrication to be brought back to life is testament to the skill and high level of American watch manufacturing prior to the quartz crisis of the 1970s. On a personal note, the Ross was the watch that first attracted me to vintage Hamiltons. Its simple, elegant, and masculine lines, while small by today's standards, 
typify the style of men watches from the 1940s and 50s. On first glance, it can be a fairly simple design, but on closer inspection, the details of the watch really set the Ross apart and are certainly enjoyed by anyone wearing one. To see this and many other watches I have for sale, please check out wolfvintagewatches.com. Link is in the description below. As always, thank you very much for watching. To support me and my channel, please remember to subscribe, like, and share, and leave your comments and questions below. See you next time. Bye.